Welcome to Biblical History. I'm Art McCarrow, your host, and we're progressing from our previous sessions now where we found out what biblical myths are. So now we want to enter into, since we, uh, we become responsible for every human being on earth and how we treat them, and what we do that we have to only do good things to people, no matter who or what they believe. That's where we are. And we found out also that if we lack wisdom, that if we seek and ask God, whatever our religion, whatever our background, that God will give it to us liberally. So now here we lay another foundational stone in this session. We're going to find out who the wise are, who the unwise are, and also we're also going to find out who barbar barbarians are. What's a barbarian? Who's not wise? Who is wise? If you remember when Jesus Christ was born, as you read through the Gospels, especially in the book of Luke, we find out that three wise men came right from the East. These wise men were not Christians. They were sorcerers. They were astrologers. And by reading the stars, they knew it was time for the Messiah to come. And they came to his birth and they brought him gifts, didn't they? So word wise, a wise person does not necessarily mean that you are one who has a very strong belief, but you're learning about your belief. You're learning what to believe. In other words, you're learning how to learn, not so much as to what to learn, but how God wants you to learn about him. That's wisdom, because only God gives wisdom. So as he gives it to you, he's drawing you to him to learn about him. Did I confuse you a little bit? <laughs> It might sound a little bit like going around the circle, but it is, and it is going around the circle, by the way. I think I told you in the past that the word educate comes from the Latin to adjudicate, or means to judge. You have to learn how to judge right from wrong. When Adam and Eve ate the tree of good of evil, they threw out their ability to judge right out the window. It was over there in the tree of life. If they would have eaten the tree of life, they would have learned how to tell what good is and evil is. They wanted to decide on their own, so God says, have at it. <laughs> God always gives you liberty, always gives you free choice. He might even give you a command, but in that command you get a choice. Do it or not do it. It's always liberty or free choice. That's the essence of what God is about. So we're reading here in the book of Romans, and he wrote this to the Romans because he never had a chance to get there. For he tells us in Romans 1 and verse 11, he gets very basic, very foundational with the Roman church because at this particular time, he had never visited Rome. And he knew he had to start with very fundamental information about God and Christ. So he said in Romans 1 and verse 11, he said, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some what? Spiritual gift. Now, a spiritual gift is not a religion. Remember, we found out a religion is what you do physically, right? It's a human work. This is a spiritual gift. It's totally in a different realm. Totally something different. All right? He says a spiritual gift to the end or purpose, you may be established. 
In other words, I'm going to give you a foundational stone. We're going to build the building. And this building has one cornerstone in it. And that cornerstone was Christ. And he says, I'm going to firmly establish that in you. And here's how you get that stone. So he goes on and he continues and says, now I would not have you ignorant. Oh, here we go again with these politically right things to say. Political correctness. You know, the word ignorant, to call anybody ignorant today in the United States is not correct. It's a no-no. To say someone's foolish is a no-no. What am I going to do when the Bible's filled with the word ignorant and foolish? Do you want me to deny God? Well, here it tells us. Now, I would not have you ignorant. You know, the word ignorant really in the Greek here comes from the Latin, which means to not be interested, ignore. You see, if you don't know the definition of a word, you can get all hopped up and you think ignorant means you don't know anything. No, it means you don't care. <laughs> when you say someone's ignorant, they're ignorant because they don't want to look into it. They don't want to find out about it. See, at, at first, you know, the United, I'm going to give you something and hit you right between the eyes. The Constitution does not allow us to have a federal government. Period. The Constitution forbids a federal government. We the people, right? That's not a government right? Have total liberty. No federal government. It should exist. That's why we call him a president. <laughs> a president is not a governor. The only place we allow governors are in states in the United States, correct? You call him a governor, right? And you know what he's supposed to govern? He's supposed to govern over the mayors of cities to see that they keep the freedom of the people. In the city of Chicago, they have what they call the alderman system. Alder comes from the Latin, which means elder. So in every city, you have a mayor who rules through the elders in that area. You follow me? You, uh, you see what it's telling you? So here we see very clearly, and start to go, he starts very, very simply. He says that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you what was let, let hitherto different places, that I may have some fruit among you, also even as among other Gentiles. So this is written to the Gentiles. So what we're going to read now, this verse, before we take a break, he states in verse 14, I'm a debtor, I'm obligated, because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So we'll take a break now and move on when we come back into these three areas. Well, I'm back again, Art McCarrow, your host, to continue our discussion on telling the Romans exactly, since he never visited them, about who the wise are, the unwise, and who barbarians are. Now, the wise, they thought and considered, and they were right, were the Greeks. And that's why the New Testament was written in Greek. It was written in Greek because they were the wise. Even when the Roman Empire defeated the Greeks and took over Greece, they knew the Greeks were wise, so they still kept the, the wisdom of the Greeks into their Roman society. In other words, the same gods that the Greeks worshipped, they also worshipped. They just changed their name. It's that simple. They spoke a different language, 
Rome spoke Latin. The Greeks spoke Greek. <laughs> it was different. It was Orthodox. And that's why the Orthodox Church is different than the Catholic Church. Because the Catholic Church Genesis came through the Rome from Constantine with the Orthodox Church coming through the Greeks. And they both have two different Bibles. But since they were the wise, in the time of Jesus, this was the accepted wise people were the Greeks. Now, it's an interesting thing when you study Greece. Greece is made up, basically, of three major sections. We're going to do a lot of discussing right in discussing these wise Greeks. There's three kinds. In the south, what they, was known as the Peloponnese, the southern part where there were a lot of islands, there were the Spartans. In the middle was Athens, which became the capital city. And the Athenians were a liberty-free people. They had a republic, just like the United States or other nations that follow suit. Uh, most good uh, nations in the West uh, tend to have the same thing. They have uh, republics with rulers over them. And then in the north, which was the third section of Greece, was called Macedonia. The Macedonians were rulers. In fact, they believed in kingship. And from them, from Philip, King Philip, a Macedonian, he had Alexander as a son. And Alexander as a son had Socrates as his teacher from Athens. The Athenians were people who all they did all day is just talk about life. It's called philosophy. You know, when you get doctorates today, our doctorates are all PhDs, aren't they? Whether it be in science, art, music, engineering, your, your doctorate is a PhD, and PhD just means a study of life. But you zeroed in on one segment of it. You're studying life in reference to art, or to music, or to politics, or to what? War, all right? <laughs> Military. So you see, this is why the Greeks were looked upon. And when Jesus was alive, Greek was the established wisdom or wise people of the day of Christ on earth as a human. Do you realize I've told you that during the time of Jesus' earthly time, there were 28 different Jewish religions. There were the Sadducees, there were the Pharisees, there was the Hillel school, there was the Shimei school, there were the Essenes. You can go on and on. They had many different religions. Even today you have the Orthodox Jew and you have the Reformed Jew, right? It's a mess. <laughs> the one word for it all worldwide is called Babylon. Confusion. And that's why we live in confusion. This is why world rule without God is impossible. Because sooner or later, somebody's not going to agree with you. Okay? So we see now that the Athenians, were these free-minded thinking people, but the Spartans, they were terrorists. <laughs> Do you know, when a Spartan boy was born, the first 20 years of his life he spent in the military. How would you like that? You got drafted into the military. They were the terrorists of the day. But you see, here's something else, people. There are terrorists in every nation. There are terrorists in every religion. During, just before Jesus was born, 
there was a group of terrorists who were called the Maccabees. They were Jewish. These Maccabees, the name Maccabees, you know what it means in the Hebrew? In the Hebrew, it means a hammer. They, they whacked you with a hammer on the head. They were terrorists. And they ended up with swords, so they called them a Sakari. A Sakari means a two-edged sword. Peter, when he was called by Christ to follow him, he was a Sakari. Do you know Judas was a Sakari? That's why he turned in Jesus, because he was a Sakari. He believed in military force to get things done. They were militarists. They were firm believers in fighting for what they wanted. And that's what the Spartans were. So the Spartans used to like the Maccabees because they said they were alike. <laughs> they were related. They were both terrorists. And you know, the Maccabees came from a, a, a person called Mathathias. When he died, his son Judas took over. It's not the same Judas who betrayed Jesus. He was Judas a Maccabean. He was a Sakari. Peter was a Sakari. Judas was a Sakari. Jesus didn't come to call the righteous. He came to call sinners. <laughs> and he sure picked a, quite a crew. He picked a tax collector called Levi. <laughs> he picked people that you'd never think he would have chosen. You know who picked them? God did. That's who picked them. So the wise are those who were the Greeks of the day and they were regarded as wise because of their belief and Paul said he was a debtor. So we're ready now to see the difference. Not only who were the wise, but who were the unwise. We'll be take a break shortly at this time. And when we return, you're going to be shocked to find out who the unwise are. So take a, a good breath <laughs> and wait for us to come back. We'll see you soon. Oh, here we go again with the Biblical History with Art McCarroll as your host. Uh, we're going to see now the unwise, we already know who they are. They weren't Greeks. <laughs> Because the wise of the day were the Greeks. That's why Alexander the Great, when he defeated the known world, which went all the way, all the way from the pillars of Hercules near Spain, the entire Mediterranean, all the way down to Ethiopia, and he went to Africa. And in Africa, being a Greek, in fact, in every place he went where he died and out way in the far eastern reaches of India, when he died, he had one purpose and goal in mind, to spread Greek wisdom, to spend the wisdom of the Greeks, to teach them that wisdom. So who's the unwise? Everybody who doesn't follow the Greeks. <laughs> the unwise were people who weren't educated. They were what? They were country people. They were the pagans. Everybody else was regarded as unwise. So you either went to a school with the Greeks or you didn't know what you're talking about. You weren't wise. So when Alexander was in Egypt, he built a city port right into the Mediterranean, and he named that city Alexandria. And he fostered the genesis of the largest library in existence of that time. He accumulated knowledge and sent out those who could teach knowledge. He had the Jews. He had the 
Asians. He had the pagans. He had every kind and type of culture, people, and race come to Alexander and write their books. And that's where the Catholic Septuagint came from. That's why the book we read, even though I'm using the King James, the first word is Genesis. That's a Greek word. It's not the correct meaning of Genesis. The correct meaning of Genesis is in verse 1. In the beginning, the word beginning there is Bedesheth, not Genesis. Bedesheth means the everlasting covenant, the agreement that God made with all humanity right from the inception of creation. This is what he promised to do. He promised to make you like him. God was reproducing himself in his image. So Genesis is a Greek name, and it means gene. We get our word genes from there, because genes is the start of a creation. So therefore, we have the word Genesis, a Septuagint Greek term. And that's exactly why the Catholics use that Bible, the Septuagint version, because they took what was given to them from the Jews that supposedly came to northern Africa to write a Bible book of their testament, the Old Testament. And it was called Genesis or the beginning of genes or how everything started. Which again, I told you, is different than what the Hebrew says for beginning. You see, if you don't understand what words mean, you're going to get way off in your knowledge. You're going to be so misled. I'm telling you, I keep saying this over and over. It's all about language. The question is, do you understand it? I remember at one time when the word cool, before the flapper era, you know what cool meant? Cool meant colder. <laughs> cool meant, is to, meant to cool off, not be so hot. But during the flapper era, the meaning of the word cool changed. Do you know what it meant? Cool meant, said, have fun. A good time. That was the flapper era. The time in the 30s when everything was for fun. And then you were cool. Today to be cool means go against the government. <laughs> That's cool. Or we use the word hot. She's hot. At one time, it used to tell the temperature. Oh, it does. It tells her the temperature of the guy who's looking at the woman he wants. That's what it means today. She's hot. So if you ladies, if you're called hot, it means you're turning them on sexually. That's what it means today. But my point is, you see how languages change meanings? See how confusing it gets when you're thinking about understanding something? You have to go to the root. You have to go to the beginning where it all began. That's why God is called the Alpha, the beginning and the end. You have to go to the root of anything to understand what we're talking about. So all we're doing in these sessions of biblical history we learn history by understanding the language, don't we? If you don't understand the language, how are you going to understand the history? I think some time ago I've told you out of uh, one of the few history books I like. It's called History of Histories. 
And the reason why it's called history of history, because it not only tells you what happened during that time, because most historians, when they write a book in a time period, since they weren't there personally, they do it by research. And from their research, they come up and they say, here's what the uh, people of that time believed what was happening in their history. How did they know? If you weren't there in court, that's called hearsay. I want to keep pounding that into your heads as you listen. Nobody knows the truth of history unless you had this book to tell you. That's what it has to do. So we see that the New Testament was written in the Greek as the wise of the day. The unwise people, they were the ones who weren't of Greek understanding. They were the pagans and the others. They brought up, made their own religion, as we found out. Well, that about covers the wise, the unwise, and the barbarians. We know who they were now, so we're ready to move on to a totally different ne subject next time. So this is Art McCarroll signing off, and thank you all for being with us.